I'm going to start this video with a disclaimer saying that death in real life is bad. It's pretty final and it kind of ruins your life. Now I've never heard a dead person saying that death was good, in fact I've never heard a dead person. The only people I've ever heard talking about what happens to me after I die have never done it and that kind of worries me. However, in a video game I think permadeath is a bloody joyful thing, something far too underused in the AAA circle and it seems to reside more and more these days in indie titles and I'd love to know which games with permadeath you love and in what ways you think certain games have been creative with the mechanic. Please do drop me a like as it helps this video immensely. Thank you. But now here's a little story and essay all about dying. We've all been there, right? You know, you're desperate to play something, there's a stack of games you could play, but nothing that really stands out as the one that will scratch that itch. It's kind of like that problem where you look into the fridge, you know, the first world problems, and you say, hmm, my fridge is overflowing with food, but there's nothing that I want to eat. It happened to me the other day, the, the, the game thing, not the fridge thing. I was in the mood to play something, but I wasn't sure what. I looked through my Steam library, checked the store, booted up the PlayStation, and even resorted to looking down my shelves at physical copies coated in dust like it was 2010. Note to self, should have cleaned since then. Now, finally, I flipped on the Xbox and I started scrolling through Game Pass and after a couple of minutes I stumbled across State of Decay. I didn't really know much about it other than it had zombies, I like zombies and I'd heard it was good so I thought what the hell it's free, not free because it's included with Game Pass and I played the subscription. Now first impressions of this game was that it was pretty good, third person killing zombies, standard male clueless hero with a friend who also has no idea what's going on and is destined to get bit. But obviously the joy of introducing two characters is a more organic flow of storytelling through dialogue. Tutorial was pretty well executed, you meet a bunch of other survivors who know more about the world we're in, your couple of quests come your way, you meet another playable character who is a female soldier or, or something, box tick to enable choice of gender, go back to the other survivors who are now dead, they turn into the undead and bite aforementioned friend. Standard zombie plot to be honest. The graphics are pretty decent and they hold up, especially bearing in mind that it released in 2013 and while I think it's been updated a bit, some of the facial animations are a little bit ropey and there was a little bit of clipping with some zombies coming through fences for example but it didn't put me off and I have to say overall any issue was kind of forgivable. Not only the age or the fact it was an indie slash double A title, it just felt more raw, somewhat B-movie-esque. Now this video isn't a review of State of Decay, I might have to make one in the future, but at this point in the experience I would have said it was good. A good, enjoyable game that was fun and playable despite its age, and that I loved some of the mechanics like the balancing of tasks to help outposts or that resources were finite. In in short, it was good, but it didn't do anything surprising. And then it completely surprised me. How wrong I was! It went from being a good game to being a great game. I went on a mission with my little hero and there was this massive fat zombie who I tried and failed to kill and then it ripped me in two. I died. I thought, eh, well, I'll just pick up at the last checkpoint, carry on. But then I found myself back at the outpost and it took me a second to realise that my character was dead. Dead dead. Their story was over. Now I could play as other characters but not the one I had been playing as. The friend who'd been bit, a story tied to my characters, was also gone. In short, State of Decay had some character specific permadeath mechanics and I was like oh hello and I yelped for joy because I had no idea this was coming. Now unlike many other zombie games like something like Dead Island or Dying Light which once you're dead it allows you to respawn at the last checkpoint, State of Decay punishes you. It does not forgive your mistakes, your incompetence, and I love it. I talked about it during a video I made on Project Zomboid, for me the perfect zombie survival game. When you die in that and State of Decay, it doesn't end the game or the run. You're still playing, but effectively the character you're playing as, the story you've been playing is over. If you want to relive that in the case of State of Decay, you'll have to restart the game. And if you don't want to lose that story, you have to stay alive. And that is why I love permadeath, or some form of it. It is a punishment that challenges the gamer to get better, to be better and I see far too few a game incorporating punishment like this these days, especially AAA games. And I think it's one reason why many people talk about a decline in gaming, something I'll touch on more in another video. But simply put, punishment has been there in gaming since the start. When games first hit arcades you put your money in the slot and play as long as you could, but failing in the game meant you lost your money. Ouch. Then other earlier games meant dying took you right back to the start of the level, gruelling. And yes, I do see the benefits of extra lives or checkpoints, 
but they came at a price of making games easier. I think that's why so many people love roguelikes, why I'm obsessed with games like FTL or Slay the Spire. Make some dodgy choices in those, and you are punished by the game ending. Compare that to something like Assassin's Creed Valhalla, or vanilla as I like to call it, you die, you carry on, you start at a checkpoint, and there is nothing to challenge you to improve. God, I hate that game. But anyway, permadeath, or some form of it, adds so much to a game, a tool many AAA developers seem scared to incorporate in their projects. It adds challenge, it adds consequence and causality. In Project Zomboid, one of my first playthroughs, I smashed a window, climbed through, and unknowingly cut myself on the shards of glass and then died from bleeding out. I didn't even get bit. A rookie error, I felt ridiculous. I was streaming at the time, but it is something that I learned from. And there's another thing that permadeath adds, learning. You grow as the experience grows around you. In a game that has zero punishment mechanics, what you learn at the start is enough to get you through, and that for me is just a bit too dull. Sure, skill trees can add new talents, but a game like Valhalla doesn't really encourage you to grow. Now, not every game needs permadeath. Originally, for example, Hidetaka Miyazaki, sorry about pronouncing your name, the Souls guy, and the dev team debated putting permadeath into Demon's Souls, a game which was already punishing enough through its difficulty would have become sadistic. Thankfully, they decided against permadeath, but it is still punishing, just like those roguelikes or State of Decay, just in a different way. Any of the Souls or Souls-like games makes it so difficult that the sense of relief and satisfaction of progressing through the game and not falling is amazing. And when I talk about these kind of punishment mechanics, it doesn't have to be just about dying. There's some form of punishment in Stardew Valley. No permadeath or brutal difficulty, but if you stay out too late or you lose all your HP, you wake up the next day at home with some of your items and things missing, which is one of the things that really annoys me about my time at Porsche. There's no punishment. And then there's something like Hellblade, Senua's Sacrifice, or Sifu, which use the punishment of death in such a unique way that will lend itself to a new video. Now, I've used the word punishment a lot, but it's not the punishment that gives you joy, because the opposite of punishment is reward. These games I've spoken about, and any which use some kind of permadeath or punishment mechanic, reward you for learning, for getting it right, for growing. You are thrown down the gauntlet right at the start to beat the game, to best it, to learn to the point where you become better than the game. And nobody brags about beating Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Well, maybe other than saying they managed to stay awake till the end or didn't get bored, but look at the videos about beating Dark Souls. There is a pride in gamers who've clocked it. Like games of yesteryear, kudos to the people who completed or got 100% on games like Super Ghouls and Ghosts. That game was brutal, and I know there are other games out there that don't have, for example, punishment mechanics, but the best of them usually find a way to challenge the player to improve, to get better, and to get it right. But to conclude, this is why I love permadeath. It's that feeling of development, and I'd love to know which games have this feeling for you in the comments below. But in short, the use of risk versus reward, of growth, of development, it adds competition. You are competing to be better than the game, to beat the game, and I love it. Please do drop me a like and a comment and check out some of my other content, but from me today, all it leaves me to say is thank you very much for watching, and this is Roy McCoy, out.